Hello people, it's Friday, April 7th, 2017. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, here to talk about video game stuff that has been going on this week. Uh, as the world burns around us, let's talk about video games. The first thing we gotta talk about, of course, we gotta acknowledge the Xbox Scorpio has been quote-unquote revealed, sort of. Uh, the scoop was given to Digital Foundry, who was allowed to go out to Redmond and see the Xbox One Scorpio for itself, and we haven't gotten a lot of details other than some confirmed specs. The quickest takeaways for layman's are the CPU is 30% faster than the Xbox One, and the GPU is closer to five times faster. Hard drive speeds are improved, although for me, it still bothers me that it's still not SSD, and there's much more usable GDDR5 RAM. Microsoft had been touting for a long time that this was going to be the most powerful console ever, and yes, it does seem like that. If you're going to say, just go out and buy a PC, I completely agree, but I guess they're going for a different market here. They're trying to capture the simply console people. And are they going to? Because with the amount of things going on with this thing, it's, it's got some complex architecture, it's got custom cooling, all this stuff. I think it's safe to assume that this thing is going to be pretty pricey, right? Uh, but the reveal, I think, impressed a lot of people, but also underwhelmed a lot of people because it is literally just a spec dump, which I think for me shows that Microsoft is, uh, you know, confident in it. They're putting this thing out to Digital Foundry, the guys that analyze this type of stuff, because they have faith in their hardware. And this reveal is really just for people like us, the people who just care about the tech stuff and the nitty gritty stuff. The real reveal is presumably going to be at E3. I suspect they're going to do a hardware reveal separately on their own before E3. But for now, all we really have are specs and a very high resolution of Forza running on Scorpio, which I linked below as well as everything else I talked about this week. The full res screenshot is really impressive. But a lot of people have been asking how this thing stacks up next to something like the likes of PlayStation 4 Pro. And they almost seem like very different machines tackling problems very differently. Xbox One Scorpio is going for full native 4K with a lot of their games and their brute force forcing it with raw graphical power. Meanwhile, PS4 Pro is a bit more of a half step and uses some clever usage of hardware with some software integration to really kind of get almost to 4K, you know what I mean? But the actual specs on paper comparing the two are very interesting. Stacking the two up, the Xbox One Scorpio clearly definitely has an edge. For the CPU, they both have eight cores, but Xbox Scorpio's is custom and it's running at a higher clock speed. The GPU is more powerful. The memory bandwidth has a leg up, definitely. There's an extra four gigs of RAM for Xbox Scorpio. And Xbox Scorpio is gonna have a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray drive something that a lot of PS4 Pro owners are missing out on. But it really comes down to CPU, GPU, and RAM, and Xbox One Scorpio has the PS4 Pro beat. But like I said, they're both taking on a different methodology towards the advancements of graphical power and getting games out there on 4K. And ultimately, in terms of power, Xbox One Scorpio is gonna win out. A lot of console fans have been keeping their eye on Scorpio for a while, but I'm personally just keeping my eyes on the games because I need games to get excited about hardware. And Xbox's fall lineup, to me personally, isn't really the hottest they've ever had, you know? Unless they get cracked down three out this year that I'm all in. Breaking news, they fixed Mass Effect Andromeda. No, they didn't, I'm sorry. I don't wanna kick a game while they're down, but Mass Effect Andromeda, uh, Bioware released a new patch that significantly upgrades some things. Most notably, everyone's freaking out about how the faces look so much better because they quote unquote fix the eyes. Uh, there's screenshots out there that make it look much better, but you know, firing the game up, we didn't really notice that much of a difference other than the fact that more characters have eyelids now? It, it seems like they didn't have eyelids before and now they do. So, hey, they're working on it. They're getting there. They still look like androids wearing a skin mask, though. They absolutely do. <laughs> but in some quick and not really surprising PC news, hot off the heels of the Xbox Scorpio announcement, NVIDIA announced the Titan XP. This is the Pascal big old Titan monster thing. It's super expensive. It's the same price as the previous Titan X, but now it's super fast and it looks like Batman's graphics card. <laughs> Since we are talking about PC, some interesting news uh, came out kind of quietly, but I think it's very interesting. Some incoming changes to Steam. It sounds like Steam behind the scenes is working to really change and, and better Steam and really get more recognizable games out there and get rid of the shovelware crap. Interestingly enough, they invited both Total Biscuit and Jim Sterling to meet with them and really discuss the process, seeing as those two guys are the biggest games media guys that criticize Steam. And one of the biggest things to come about it is that they are kind of changing how trading cards work and are relied on in Steam, uh, but most notably the curator system, which is completely broken, so to speak. A lot of people don't use it. Steam is working on a new system called Explorers, where a, a, a chosen group of games gamers are allowed to opt into this process and become sort of like the secret council and decide what games should be promoted to the front page. In terms of more lesser games that would never get noticed otherwise, I think it's really interesting. They still have to really work out how the program's gonna work and they're doing probably a whole bunch of algorithm stuff. But I think this is good that they're paying attention to this because I love stumbling and coming across new games on a game marketplace. So if Steam is working on that and getting rid of the crap, I totally applaud them for that. And since we are talking about more PC stuff, this is the most insane monitor I've seen 
in a while. Samsung has announced their like double wide monitors. This thing is 49 inches across. It has a resolution of 3840 by 1080 and it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's basically like two 27 inch full HD displays like slapped next to each other. But this thing is a beast. Like who needs that? Somebody who looks at really, really long things. <laughs> Big long dicks. They're going to start producing these things in September. They haven't announced the price yet, but I can imagine that it's going to be crazy. But speaking of crazy, Jack and Daxter is getting re-released on PlayStation 4. And I'm really excited because I love those games. Jack and Daxter, Jack 2, and Jack 3, and also the Jack kart racing game are going to be re-released and upscaled and given trophies on PlayStation 4. And those are all pretty much really awesome good games. I just liked it when they made Jack like an edgelord. See, I, I Jack two totally. That. Jack two totally vapes. He definitely <laughs> oh, he does. Absolutely yeah. vapes. They're dropping on PSN later this year. That's about all we know right now. So keep your eyes peeled. But something that we'd like to show you guys, since every week we try and highlight really crazy, ridiculous things that people do in games. Uh, it's it's this exploit from Breath of the Wild, which is absolutely insane. This guy uses the Magnesis tech to essentially kind of fly his way across the whole map. And honestly, this might look like an exploit or a weird glitch for a crappy game. But I think this is just a good example of how when games systems give you that much freedom to do things and exploit things. I think sometimes that makes for a good game and this is Zelda at its best using your tools and using all the systems in the game to kind of do creative things and solve problems and this guy solved the problem of flying across the entire map. Also in some news that has been really jamming people up it's Persona 5 and the ability to share the game. Persona 5 and Atlas have decided that you cannot screenshot or share natively from the PlayStation 4 any aspect of the game. And if you are a streamer or a YouTuber or someone who just likes to upload stuff and show their friends, uh, you're extremely limited on what you can show. They only want you to show off roughly the first third of the game and specific moments within them, and they have threatened that anyone who uh, doesn't abide by these rules are likely going to be DMCA'd by Atlas, taken down on YouTube, copyright strike, whole nine yards. And I think that's completely tone deaf and stupid and bullshit. Atlas as a company is completely within their right. They are the copyright holders. They can do these things. That is how it works, but it still just kind of feels shitty, you know, a kind of an abuse of the DMCA system, but not only that, just out of touch. This is a Japanese company that are, is very traditional and they, they stick by their ways. A Nintendo is very similar in this aspect, but sharing and showing off games does not hurt anything at all. And it's how, you know, a society works now. This was kind of a thing that a lot of game companies were trying to do, but I thought we were over it by now, but it seems like Japanese publishers still aren't. I know some of you guys out there really just want to post the game and stream it and just show it off as much as you can. So we'll keep you posted if anything changes. Also briefly, since we were just talking about Persona 5, uh, we do have a before you buy up if you are curious about it. Uh, also on youtube.com slash because video games, my personal channel, I, I posted a video from a perspective as a newcomer. It's really my first time with a Persona game. So maybe check it out if you're interested. But something interesting that caught my eye that it's completely rumor and complete conjecture, uh, but a hiring post from Avalanche, the Avalanche that is owned by Warner Brothers and was responsible for stuff like Disney Infinity is hiring a writer for a new RPG game. And the job posting expects requirements of uh, experience in stuff like writing drama and comedy, but also knowledge of British culture. Now this has led people to go absolutely wild and this is all rumors, but the speculation is that Warner Brothers and British culture, Warner Brothers owns Harry Potter. Oh my God, they're making a Harry Potter RPG. Holy shit. Now I keep saying this is of course just complete rumor and speculation, nothing more than that, but a good Harry Potter based RPG where you are a wizard in that world that is completely fleshed out could be pretty amazing. Look at the movie Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It wasn't great, but in terms of expanding the Harry Potter world, there is more there and it could be really cool. But now we gotta talk about that free console giveaway we do every single week. Uh, congratulations to some of your recent winners who got it, hope you like it. But you know how it works, there's a link below, you click it, you sign up, you enter once, then you're entered forever, and then every single week I go in, close my eyes, randomly choose one winner to win a free console of their choice. And this week's winner is gonna be this person right here. Be sure to pay attention, keep an eye on your inbox, I'm gonna be getting touch with you ASAP to figure out where I can send your console. So congratulations, you lucky bastard. But now we got to talk about all the video game stuff that has been going on this week. First things first, Xbox One Scorpio. How do you feel about it? Uh, there's still a lot more to be seen because we don't know what it looks like. We don't know what it's actually going to be called. And I'd like to see more games for it. What do you think about it? And since we talked about a lot of PC stuff this week, if you're into the Titan XP, are you going to get one? Do you have infinite money? Uh, also, if you really have a lot of money, are you going to get one of those crazy ultra wide panels? And if 
you are someone that is enjoying Mass Effect Andromeda, have you hopped in after this new patch? Do you think it really makes a difference? Have you noticed any other changes that people haven't pointed out? Let us know in the comments. I'll be down there talking to you guys as much as possible, but if you got anything else for me, you can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Jake Baldino as well. You guys know the deal though. Thank you so much for coming around every single Friday. It really makes our week here, right Tom? Oh, absolutely. That didn't sound convincing. If you've been hanging around with us though, you probably know by now clicking the like button helps us out. But if, you, if you're new, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos every single day. Thank you guys for coming around. I'm Jake Baldino. Pizza's on me.